everybody and welcome back to Very Biased Opinions. It's finally time to have a full week of Premier League fixtures. The winter break is behind us. Quick note on the winter break. It sucks. I hate it. I don't want it anymore. Agreed. Okay, now we've got that out of the way. <laughs> we do timestamp every game, so make sure you check out our descriptions if you want to cherry pick towards certain games. But to be honest, you should just listen to every word that we say and drink it in. I'm ready. Are you ready? Oh, so ready. Lead us into the first game, number one. Raging Dumpster Fire Arsenal host. Slightly Raging Dumpster Fire Everton. These are two Raging Dumpster Fires, Tom, that are actually in a little bit of good form. Well, Arsenal did win 4-0 yesterday, so that's like the first win they've had in probably 12 Premier League games, I think, because they draw every game. But I'm going to leave Arsenal for you, um, even though I think they've only lost as many games as Leicester have lost this season. So think about that one. Uh, and I'm going to talk about Everton because Everton have improved under, under Ancelotti, but people are getting carried away with talking about what a genius he is. Oh my word, how he's transformed everything. I'm like, no, he's a good manager with a good squad, a squad that Marco Silva did appallingly badly with and was going to get them relegated. You yeah. look at that Everton team, they should be where they are. Challenging for Europe. Challenge, uh, you know, if they have a better than average season, they'll be in the mix for the uh, Champions League. And everybody doesn't want to get into the Champions League, including City, but we'll get to them. So Everton do have a shot, and they do have a great manager, and they have a striker in form in Calvin Lewin, who I think will be in the next England squad. I mean, who else is going to be there? Everyone else is injured. <laughs> Everyone else is injured, and he is scoring goals. And uh, Southgate likes to give the youngsters a go. So, but. And I think this one's, this one's going to be back to a draw for Arsenal. I see this one being a share of the spoils. I think this will be nice and easy one or draw. Can't believe I'm going to say this, but I can see the raging dumpster fire that is Arsenal actually winning this match. Uh, they were actually convincing. For the first time in what must seem like months, four goals. Did when you watch the first half? No, I didn't. Oh, they were poor. They were really poor in the first half. The second half, they were a lot better. Maybe I should change my mind, Ian. Thank you for literally just fucking railroading in on that one, right? Um, no, but the dumpster fire is still in full effect, and you have no idea what you're going to get out of this team, but Everton are pretty much the exact same side. They got a good win against Palace in their last match out. I think Arsenal are just going to be on a high, though, and they've not had a week to kind of stew on anything. They're going straight in. They're coming up against an Everton side that they should be able to beat, and I think they will. Now, you've gone for a one-all draw? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to the Arsenal. And yes, Arsenal fans, I'm backing you to win this. But no, that does not mean I like you. Think you're a good team. Value any of your players. Value your manager. Value your ground. Value your fan base. Value anything about you. You're a raging dumpster fire. I hope you get relegated. In other news, Ian, lead us into the next exciting game. They've never been the same since George Graham left. Burnley versus AFC Bournemouth. I think I'm going to talk about Eddie Howe. There's a shot. Um, it's literally never happened before, obviously. You're all in shock to hear that. But uh, Eddie Howe's pretty great. And the club actually seemed to be um, riding the ship. Against Sheffield United, they put in a really good performance. It was a late goal, if memory serves, that won it for Sheffield United. And um, it was a really baffling display from Bournemouth, following up a victory in their match before then. And you just, you feel that with the whole club being behind Eddie Howe, it wouldn't matter if he was coaching them in a 1-1-8 formation, they'd get it right eventually, and even the young players. And having players like Billing, etc., that are now back and have played five or six games and can play now, is really helpful. And they're starting to look more like the cohesive unit they were before 937 different injuries, and, you know, they had to go down to the park to find players. Uh, Burnley, on the other hand, I watched their match. Was it last night that they played? It took uh, a... No, they, they, they played... Uh, yeah, they, they played on Saturday, didn't they? 1-2-1. Yeah. One. But it was, a, it was a wonder goal from Vidra. Like, great touch, movement, and then absolutely spanks it in. They were value for money. Southampton attacked. It was a good game. I, there were a lot of good games in the last couple of days. I can't not back Bournemouth. I'll never not back Bournemouth. The worst I'll give them is a draw, except against Man United, where obviously they will lose by an odd VAR-infused goal. So, I've got Bournemouth to win this 2-1. I'm just going to go for Burnley. I'm going to go probably the opposite score, actually. I'm going to go 2-1 Burnley. I think that, um, obviously, these two managers are so experienced with their clubs. It's a matter of just 
They've got through their bad runs now. Burnley a bit more than Bournemouth. I think Burnley have gone up to like 34 points now. They've definitely put like all relegation figures behind them. And it's just kind of like sticking to the belief they have in the club. But mm. um, Dyche has built it around being very, very hard to beat, very resolute. And Eddie Howe's done it through playing like attacking good, maybe a little bit too open football at times. But they're both sort of like getting their players back and... You know, things are just sort of going back to normal for both sides. Burnley, this one will be tight. I just see Burnley winning it 2-1. I really like that these are two clubs that, as much as the argument about how much does a manager affect a club and the movement of top clubs have gone, this manager has a belief that we're going to buy into from the top down. The entire club is built on it. They backed them, and they've both been in the league for three or four years now. And it's just, you know, they're young. They're well, young. They're English and they're... They're still pretty young, I would say. They're probably yeah. like in the... You know, what? They, I think how still late 30s. You might, Yeah, he might be like 40 at best. And it's just good to see. And they play two very different styles of football, but two styles of football that definitely work. And they're two styles of football that will keep them in the league. And it's nice to see them not just panic and sack the manager because everyone is behind what they're doing. And, and, and Burnley were the epitome of this because they actually went down under Dyche. Took yeah. that money they initially got from the Premier League, improved everything behind the scenes, went back up with him, and are now just really reaping the benefit of it year on year. Yeah. But now it's time for Chelsea versus Tottenham Hotspur. This game's taken on a hell of a lot more significance. I mean, it's a big derby game anyway, but it's the fact that Tottenham have really jumped into striking distance to getting into the top four now with some very un like performances. They, they, going back to their FA Cup win against Southampton, it was a very gung-ho display. And that game at the weekend was a gung-ho display. I don't think they were lucky. I think they should have won about 5-2. I think if Harry Kane was a player, he would have got a hat-trick easily in that game. But Villa will count themselves unlucky. It was like, Alderweire scores an own goal, and then he scores one in the right end. Englis scores for Villa, and then he has a freak miss at the end. Like, And then, like, Son misses a penalty and the Villa players forget to like run back and like clear the ball so he can just tap it into the net. It was a fr really, really weird game. I'm not going to buy in that Mourinho's changed. Again, like Ancelotti, this is a side that was underperforming and he's a good manager and he's just got them performing again. It's not really like a massive shock that he's done this. Um, and I I'm sure you'll probably talk a lot more about Chelsea. But I fancy Spurs in this one. I really do. I just think Spurs are going to win it. I think they've got a bit of momentum behind them. I think I think that they're going to... I think this could be crazy as well. I'm just going to go 3-2 Tottenham. My biggest gripe with that as a prediction is how often Chelsea have been a bogey team to Spurs and how often Spurs have mentally collapsed. And I think that, like you said, without Harry Kane in the team, it's hard, a lot harder for them to score goals. And I worry that without him... This Chelsea team, as long as they don't do that random thing where they capitulate, which, by the way, they're probably going to do tonight, so they'll get it out of their system anyway, so don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> tune in at eight. Uh, no, but, I mean, That'll like, be really I, good for when people watch this on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. What the hell was that American talking about? <laughs> Fucking idiot. Um, no, but I love this Chelsea team. I love their, like, insane attack. I think they're a better version of what Spurs wanted to be a couple of years ago. They're, they have a lot more end product that isn't just coming out of one player. It's coming out of four or five attacking players in constant rotation that all seem to know their job and do it really well. I mean, their, their biggest flaw is, like, random defensive lapses. And I don't know if I've done this on camera or not, but have you seen the saves table for the top 125 goalkeepers in Europe? Funnily enough, Tom, no, that one slipped me by. Capers the bottom. He literally does not make a save over 50%, basically. If it's a routine save, it's a save you should make, he does it. Everything else goes in. And that's kind of what they're dealing with. They have the world's most expensive goalkeeper who's not worth the money they paid, but because of the, I don't know, the world we live in now, the economics of where we live, they have to pay that just for an average goalkeeper, and that's... The, and the fees are going to go up. But this Chelsea team, everywhere else, look great. And they have a centre-back in Kurt Zuma who makes some mistakes, but to me reminds me of Rio Ferdinand when Rio Ferdinand used to make mistakes that you're watching it and you're like, just cut the dumb shit out and you'll be the best defender in the world. You're a unit, you win headers. Rudiger has been really good this season. I've got a better example. Rob Dickey. You know, if you say that, someone's going to come sign him. Oh yeah, sorry, he's terrible. He doesn't exist. He's a sub. A sub. Um, 
no, this Chelsea team's awesome, and I, I think they're gonna literally put Spurs on the sword. This Spurs side always capitulate at the worst moment. They should have won the league multiple times, they haven't done it. They could have won the Champions League in the worst final anyone's ever watched outside of Chelsea Man United, and they couldn't do it. They've lost their good manager. As much as Mourinho loves this stuff, I don't know how much of him is in this Spurs side, and how much of the Spurs side under Pochettino is still just coming out, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. They're they're drilled in a one style of play. Most of their players have come in under him. So, talking too much for two straight games now. 4-0 Chelsea. Oh my god. <laughs> no. Wolverhampton Wanderers versus Norwich City. Hey, so Wolves, everyone's favorite club to like. I backed them in the winter break to win, and what did they do? They did not. They played the most boring game of the winter break in a nil-nil draw with Leicester City, which is a great result for them. D this is what non-football fans hate the most, is no goals. But anyway, look, Wolves are really good. Norwich City are really bad. Not a lot else to say there. The Spirit will lead his team along. That's right, I remembered who the Spirit is this week after I named him that. The Spirit will lead his team along to a 3-0 victory over Norwich City. I disagree. I disagree with the nil because Wolves cannot score first in a game, Thomas. You saw Rules. that even against Leicester. They thought they'd score first, but VAR just had to find. They had to find something to cancel out that goal because that's just, it doesn't happen. Um, no, Norwich played really well against Liverpool. It's been a theme, isn't it? All season. They play well, but they just don't get the results. I think they've only won four games all season. And you have to think Wolves are going to win this one. Uh, I, I think it's going to... I do think Norwich will score. I think Norwich will take the lead. And Wolves will come back to win like they always do. I'll go 3-1 Wolves. So, little known sub-current right now is that Mane or Salah, if they ended up being wooed by Barcelona and Real Madrid in the summer, which is want to happen. That's what Madrid and Barca tend to do. Well, you've had great years. We're just going to sign you for a shed load of money is that Adama Traore would be Liverpool's first pick to replace them. It's the best side in Liverpool. Liverpool <laughs> hosting one of the worst sides in London, West Ham United. Yeah, sort of sliding below like a barnet now, aren't they, West Ham, in terms of like where they are in London. I'd, love, There's a lot I'd rather be Brentford. I'm just saying it now. Well, yeah, I said barnet. There's a lot of bad things going on at West Ham, and this is the game they really, really don't want to have now. They were uh, pretty poor last time out as well. It seems like a long time ago that they even played. Um, and actually, no, they didn't, because they, they had their game this slide against City, didn't they? So they haven't played They're in ages. Playing tomorrow, aren't they? Playing it this week. So they've got to play City, and then they've got to play Liverpool. Oh, so they're going to be... Oh, you'd have to think they're going to be in a lot of trouble by the time some more favourable fixtures roll around for them. But things aren't looking good off the pitch for them either. There's a lot of discontent with the fans and the owners. And what can you say about Liverpool? Just the best side in the world. There, said it. I know you don't like to hear it, but they are. And they don't look like losing any game. And when we get round to talking about Champions League in the week and stuff, I just don't see who's going to beat them even in that competition. They just look absolutely unstoppable. And this will be a nice, comfortable, easy win for them. I'm going 3-0 Liverpool. So I have multiple points on this, but firstly... I want to predict the same as you, but I can't because we predicted basically different things on everything, and so now I have to stay different because if I don't, we're just maintaining. Well, you, you can't, you've got to say you're, you're having Liverpool to win, though, aren't you? Oh, yeah, 4 0. Yeah. 4 0. I mean, this is a, a walk in the park. So, my question would be to West Ham fans How happy were you when David Moyes left, and how angry are you now he's back? Because to me, he should have just been given the winter, having kept the team up and solid last year, and just been like, right. David, here's our plan. Are you interested? Right, you are. Right, right. Let's invest in these players. Because let's be honest, most football managers, most clubs don't pick players anymore. It's not David Moyes saying, I want him. It's the club identifying targets moving forward, especially a club like West Ham, who seem to have a rotation of managers. They've shot themselves in the foot. They brought back a guy who normally could keep a team in the league, but the rot seems to have fully set in at this club. I think they could go down. I think this could be like the year when they had Jermaine Defoe, Joe Cole, all those great young English players, a team you could not possibly see going down that went down with a whimper. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't see it as David Moyes' fault. The club has been toxic since the move. One of those sides that you look at down the bottom where people look and go, oh, they're too good to go down. One of those sides is going to go down. Oh. So it could well be West Ham. Yeah. 
Now, Ian, the other thing I want to bring up before we go into our mid-episode break is that with West Ham and Man City's match being played tomorrow, I am calling an audible. Now, technically, you won a tie break two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I call bullshit on that because the match will be played. Therefore, the round will be completed. Therefore, the winner of predictions of that match tomorrow is the winner of that round. And I will win and I will be victorious. We can do that, but one of us has to invent a time travel device. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for following Very Biased Opinions. I've been told to remind you that if you are watching this, please make sure you're still subscribed. YouTube just seems to like to cull people. We really appreciate everybody who's subscribed, everybody who likes it. We've got a lot of people commenting. We really appreciate that. At the end of the video, we'll thank a couple of you for your continued support. Please go to Grandstand Betters. They are an awesome tipster website. They are much better at this than us. And by that, I mean roughly 6 to 8% better than us. But that's a lot of money at the end of the day. Their free tips alone will make you over 600 pounds a year. Just have a look. Go to them. Click on them. They've got a podcast now. They've got a Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram. Go win yourself some money. Additionally, if you don't like listening to us talk that much, which makes no sense why you're on our channel anyway, go to the timestamps below. If there's just one game you want to hear about, click below. If it's mid midway, say it's Saturday night and you're looking at Sunday's games, go click through to the start of Sunday's games, except we don't do them in order, so you don't do that. But still, you know, have some fun with it. And without further ado, Gilding Lily, or any more self-promotion, because Lord, I've done enough of that, we go ahead with another cracker of a game in Leicester City, hosting Manchester City. Right. Out. Get out! Go away, you cheating scum! Get out! Oh, look at us, we're Man City! Ooh. Pep Guardioli, go home! Sergio Aguero, find a new club! David Silva, out, out, out! You're done! Woo! Finally, Man United, not the worst club in Manchester. Which team do you support, Tom? As you may have guessed from that reaction, and I'm sure you've all seen it, Man City have been told that they are not to play in Europe for the next two years for breaching financial fair play laws. We are going to be talking about Man City in a Champions League video later on in the week, so we'll do a lot more talking about it then, because I do think like this allegation is going to drag out. But I will just say, Pep, did you hear what Pep said today? He said he'd stay, didn't he? Even if they would go down to League Two, I will stay with the rest of my contract. Because you have to say, if they if they are going to be kicked out of Europe, are the Premier League going to give them any punishment? Well, I mean, isn't this the question? Isn't this the question? I mean, they're still like, in Europe, we dock teams titles. In fact, the entire world outside of America dock teams titles for cheating. I don't think they'll be well, dock titles, but I, I think, I think they could, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, it's still very hypothetical because it's going to be appealed and you... I can't see it sticking myself uh, just because of who who represents Man City. It will um, be less, right? Like every single time there is a fine given out by UEFA or FIFA, Cass seems to cut it in half. It's just like rule of thumb. It's like you have done wrong and they were correct, but you've spent a lot of money appealing. So we'll cut it in half. Well, it's a can of worms. I mean, again, it's Champions League stuff more, but um, it's a can of worms because you sort of think like, well, if that it, if we get done for it, how the hell did PSG not get done for it? So, well, I mean, isn't that the question right now that's being asked? And I saw La Liga, I feel like La Liga or like a couple of the smaller clubs in Spain were like, thank God you're finally paying attention. Now go look at PSG because the numbers don't make any sense. Going back to this game, I, I, I actually think City are going to win this game though. Um, I think that there's, there's a bit of a, there's going to be a bit of a kind of siege mentality around Man City and there's going to be a backs to the wall. Let's show them, show them what we got. They'll easily beat West Ham, uh, hopefully 3-0 in the week, because otherwise I'm going to lose predictions for a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I think they will beat Leicester here. I, I, I don't know why. It should be an entertaining game, you would think, but I just think that you'll be too strong. I'm going for 3-1 Man City win. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm copying your scoreline because that is exactly what I think is going to happen. This City team are fantastic. They're the second best club in, in England. They're probably in the top five clubs in Europe still. They are still in with a shout to win the Champions League. They have defensive frailties. You see Leicester scoring. Is Vardy fit? I don't think he is. I don't think he is either. Even if he plays, he hasn't played enough football. I, I, I think also Le Leicester looked like the one side that really suffered from that winter break. They were so sluggish yeah. against Wolves at times. I think like Vardy, like, they would like so many chances where they would normally release Vardy down the channels and they turned and stopped to play the ball backward. It's a very unlike Leicester performance. I think also... And I don't have it in front of me, and I probably should if I'm going to raise it in this, but 
I'd like to see Leicester's form in the last 10 matches compared to the first, like, 16. Because they started the season like a house on fire, and the last five or six matches, not they haven't won, but it's been less win-win-win. It's been win, draw-draw, win, lose, win. And that sort of form doesn't beat Man City normally. And Man City, when they played Leicester last time, got really up for I think they won 3-0, didn't they? They got really up for the match, though, because they know what it means. And I think they won 3-1, actually. Yeah. But I think Leicester took the lead. They're only one point above Leicester right now. They're going to want to pad that lead. They want second place, at the very least. Like, we talk about it not mattering, but it does. You'd rather be second than third, right? You'd rather silver than bronze. Southampton versus Aston Villa. Okay, so Ian, I didn't see it, but I believe the Aston Villa manager was very critical of VAR. Yeah, was I can see third? his point. I can see his point. It's just the whole, the whole thing, usual thing with VAR of us. Is it clear and obvious? You know, and it, and it probably wasn't. I mean, Villa have suffered from this, I feel like, all season. I feel like all season they've been on the wrong end of it. I unfortunately think that they are going to come up against the Southampton side seething from losing to a wonder goal. And as much as I hate King Ralph, he has galvanized the club. They're, as far as I can remember, they're clear of relegation. They're on 31 points, West Ham are on 24, Watford 24, Norwich 18, Villa on 25. Villa, I think, will come to play. I think they'll put their all into it. They tend to. But unless Jack Grealish comes up with some form of magic, I just don't back them to win this. I think Southampton will win. I think it's going to be 2-1. Jack Grealish really is head and shoulders above everything at Aston Villa. I mean, actually, they play quite well against Spurs, but every time he's on the ball, he's like a different level. Like, the way he's like, um, a little bit like sort of a, a old reference now, but like Gascoigne, the way he wasn't like a quick player, but the way he just glide past people in midfield. It's like it's Wilshere used to do it when he was a youngster too. And yeah. like, you know, before he had like what the first of his many, 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 many injuries. And Grealish is a lot like that. Um, weirdly, Southampton are really bad at home. They think they they don't really win many games at home. They're a much better side away from home. And because of that, I think Villa will get a, a much needed away win here, Tom. I'm going reverse of your score. Two one Aston Villa. Oh my god, in the Eagles are coming because it's Crystal Palace versus the Geordies from Newcastle. Thomas, just quickly before I go on about a wonderful, brilliant manager who's managing up in the northeast, and I don't mean Phil Parkinson at Sunderland. Trouble at Crystal Palace. Uh, some discontent at Palace. Um, Hodgson didn't get the players in he wanted over the transfer window. He's been very critical. Their season's kind of hit the rocks. They've scored the least amount of goals in the Premier League, and they're not really going anywhere, and I wouldn't even be shocked if Hodgson walks away at the end of the season. That leads me into talking about a wonderful, vibrant young manager called Stephen Bruce, who is the second coming of Kevin Keegan. I will love it if we beat them. Who love put it. in a swashbuckling first-half performance against Arsenal, and sadly they sort of petered out a little bit at the end. But How did it end? Yeah, I just said it, it pe petered out a little bit at the end. Um, but the first half was so good, we can disregard everything else that happened in that game. Saint Maximan is the most frustrating player in the world. He is some t he's fantastic to watch, but players his teammates just don't know what he's going to do. So no one could get on the end of his crosses or his set pieces because they're just like, well, I don't know if he's going to cross or whether he's going to come back out and run back towards our own goal. He's just a madman. Um, so yeah, Luke, both these sides struggled in front of goal. It's not going to be pretty to watch, but I just think Newcastle will nick it one 0 I mean, I'm really enjoying us going with different scores and me having no idea what's going on. So as much as Palace are rogue warriors, I'm going to go for a 1-0 win on their part. I didn't know all about the discontent. Um, I do know a couple Palace supporters and they're very proud and happy with their club. But I've probably uh, been blown up by the media then, but it's just like... Oh, it was, it, it's behind the scenes though that, yeah, you know. And Newcastle, I just, God knows what's going through a lot of their heads. I mean, the, the Maximan goal against Oxford kind of epitomizes who he is as a player. He had been literally useless to that point. He was over dribbling, over passing, over shooting, and like skying him out for throw-ins. And then out of nowhere, a thunderbolt into side netting from 18 yards. And you're like... Yeah, no. You know, that's, that's the thing. That's... For half the game, he ran Arsenal ragged. And, um, and he hit the post at the end as well. You know, he, if they'd have got it back, they could have got it back to two one. It would have been a close finish. You'd have thought. I mean, so then you got Joel Linton up front, and um, he only looks good against Oxford. So is he like a League One player? Probably. 
he's literally useless. He didn't look great against Oxford. He scored one good goal and that was it. He also missed an open goal, if you remember. I can't believe that's their most expensive signing ever. I can't believe how bad he's been in the league. You, you, you love Steve Bruce. They're too erratic for me. I can't watch Newcastle United and even figure out what the hell half their players want to do. So I'm going 1-0 Crystal Palace. And just lead us into the next game. Sheffield United versus Brighton and Hove and Albion. Well, the season has been absolutely wonderful, hasn't it, for Sheffield United? But surely this is Wilder's toughest test when he comes up against Tyson Fury in the re rematch at the weekend. He couldn't knock him out in the first match. Um, but you got to be confident going into it with this one. Uh, last time he faced a battle like this, it was in the playoff final against York. Here's what he did after he was victorious in that one. And you have to think his Sheffield United side are going to be too strong for Brighton in this one. And I'm going sh another glorious win for Sheffield United. Two goals to nil. Ian, firstly, how long have you been planning that speech? What speech? Good. Right. Uh, Sheffield United have been nothing sort of magical. Brighton and Hove and Albion have been nothing sort of a dumpster fire. And when you see a team that has three different teams put together, you expect more, but they're still not performing to the right level. You can't see them outworking this Sheffield United team. And Sheffield United have outworked just about every team in the league, even when they lose. I think Spurs lose, Sheffield United win, and Sheffield United retake the fifth spot, which, by the way, is European football. Thank you, Man City. It's been a pleasure. Really good to see you. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Enjoy. Just, just, just back there. Back there. Thanks. Right, um, okay. Also, we're getting the fucking Premier League title from, like, 2017 or 16 when we came second. It's fucking ours. You cheated. You're out. Uh, but more importantly, more importantly, Sheffield United are going to win this. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be exciting. But it is going to be a Chris Wilder special 1-0. It's been a... A long and arduous journey to get here, but finally, finally we get to something worth talking about because it's time for the main event. Manchester United versus Troy Deeney-led Watford Football Club. So as we said, we are filming this before Manchester United play Chelsea uh, tonight. That should be a really good game. And we have resident expert and Manchester United fan Thomas Pickering to talk us through this match. It's petty. It's poor and it's not classy, but fuck you, Man City. Enjoy some pain. I'm done with you. <sighs> Man United don't really care what they do against Chelsea. I predicted a 3-0 win, but knowing them, they go out and lose 9-0. Uh, they are better than this Watford side, and Watford are not on a great run of form. They have a lot of stuff to work out, and there doesn't look like Paul Pogba's coming back anytime soon, if at all. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has given an interview where he's basically said as much. He said he doesn't know when he's coming back. There's so much work to do. He's only just hitting a treadmill. It's hard not from the outside looking in to feel like he doesn't want to come back either if he's only just on a treadmill now. Like, it doesn't feel like he's trying to get back to the team. It feels very much like him and his agent are redirecting either a Real Madrid or Juventus transfer. I don't think Juventus can afford him. So the idea that he thinks he's going to force through a move to a club that just spent the most money they've ever spent on Ronaldo, they'd have to shell out a hundo million again for Pogba. I could see him at Real. It's going to overshadow, I think, most of Man United until the end of the season is this like uber, uber player not playing for us. But in Fernandez, hopefully... United fans, we pinned a lot of hope on this, but hopefully we finally got a pair that can unlock defenses and play a forward pass. Equally, maybe Matty gets a bit more game time. Hopefully, Igalo is actually successful. We should be seeing him come off the bench in this match. He's made a lot of points, sir. Is there any news on Rashford coming back? I haven't heard a thing. Okay. Have you? No, I'm in. I mean, it's a, it's a stress fracture of the back. I think, for being honest, him coming back before the end of the season would be luck. It's quite possible Kane and bloody Rashford could not be playing in the Euros if they don't come back soon enough. But Igalo is a target man. It should allow the best things about Martial to come out as opposed to his sulking. I know somebody on our channel recently predicted that he'd be sent off, and the only thing I can imagine him being sent off for is sulking with the referee about some, like, petulant decision, like a throw-in not going his way, and him just totally throwing the toys out of the pram. I think Man United will win this. 
they're they're definitely good enough. Watford are down the bottom of the table. They are gonna scrap, and Troy Deeney is gonna bully, bully, bully. But I don't see them winning this. I see this being a two 0 Man United win. I wrestled with this one, and I, I initially thought Man United were gonna win it. But the more I think about it, I think Watford haven't played in a while. I mean, they, they went, they were, they had a, they should have beat Brighton in the last game, and then conceded a equaliser to end up with a draw in that one. And that's been a bit what they've been done doing a bit lately is taking the lead and then conceding, uh, throwing away points, a bit like Villa. Um, I just think this is going to be one of those frustrating ones for Man United again, I'm afraid. Tom, I, I can see this being a one or draw. I can see Watford getting a, a goal from a corner and then Man United just struggling to like break them down and maybe Greenwood's the difference when he comes on late in the game. 1-1. One, one. Can I just say one thing before we sign off? Go and have a look at the life of Manchester United goalkeeper who survived the Munich air disaster, sadly died today, Harry Gregg. I didn't really know a lot about him, but just phenomenal goalkeeper. Like he was in like one of like the 58 or 56 World Cup. He was like one of the players of the tournament for like Northern Ireland in that one. And he, what he's most famous for in that air disaster is not only surviving it, but he went back in and saved four people's lives, including a uh, pregnant woman uh, and uh, he is actually known as the hero of the air disaster. So very sad to hear he died. But go go check out his life because he had a fascinating career. Right. And with that said, just a couple things. Thank you, Roberto Hollis, for comments, scores, and your players you predicted. Thank you, Jake Green, every now and then. And by now and then, I mean pretty regularly you comment on our videos. And a final thank you to some fucking guy who just won't leave us alone R robert allen or something he just keeps writing and you know fair play to you i'm never gonna respond that is a long video and we thank you very much for sitting through it and enjoying it we hope you did enjoy it click the like button click subscribe hit the notify bell and go check out grandstand betters thomas is there anything else you could possibly add you're looking for detailed football analysis you're in the wrong place <laughs>